Greetings, everyone. Here's my latest Ice Age Floodscapes video on Brett's Great Cataract Group. Practically everyone in the Pacific Northwest is familiar with Dry Falls within the Grand Coulee. But did you know it's just part of a much larger feature called the Great Cataract Group? The Great Cataract Group lies midway along 50 mile long Grand Coulee. The Great Cataract Group was named and identified by pioneering geologist J. Harlan Bretz about 100 years ago. Bretz recognized it as a recessional cataract complex associated with ice age flooding. The Great Cataract Group is a series of recessional cataracts and vertical cliffs almost four miles wide. Today, the height of multi-alcoved dry falls is 400 feet. Floodwaters behind the falls approached another 400 feet deep. Dry falls and Umatilla Rock lie at the west end of the Great Cataract Group. From here, the cataract complex continues along Deep Lake to the Castle Lake Basin before terminating at Don Paul Draw. The Great Cataract Group has been frozen in time since the last mega floods about 15,000 years ago. Dry Falls is what geologists call a recessional cataract, which started about 15 miles to the south near Soap Lake. With each Ice Age mega flood from Glacial Lake Missoula, the cataract incrementally eroded upstream before finally shutting down after the last flood 15,000 years ago. If or when there's a future Ice Age with mega floods, the cataract will likely resume its migration upstream towards the head of Grand Coulee. Across the elevated basalt plateau between Dry Falls and Castle Lake Basin, behind the precipitous Cataract walls are dozens of south trending semi parallel grooves created by mega floods. The grooves are oriented in the direction of flow for the mega floods that were hundreds of feet deep and raced across the elevated plateau you see here. Along with the grooves, floodwaters also hollowed out some shallow circular potholes. Reclusive Deep Lake is a gorgeous, narrow, one and a half mile long lake that occupies a coulee along the base of the central Great Cataract Group. The lake is up to 125 feet deep. Deep Lake Coulee joins Dry Falls Coulee downstream. Floodwaters that poured over Dry Falls simultaneously dropped into Deep Lake Coulee, as well as the Castle Lake Basin to the east.
During the mega floods, a swarm of deep and huge round potholes were drilled out by powerful circulating eddies called Colts. That's spelled K O L K S. Huge potholes like these have an affinity for the top of the Grand Ronde basalt formation, both here and elsewhere. At ground level, huge potholes like these are almost invisible, but from above, they are striking. Notice the overhanging ledges within this pothole. This is where flood waters preferentially plucked and sucked out basalt columns from the bottom of the pothole. The more randomly fractured basalt in the overlying entablature was more resistant to erosion, thus forming overhangs within the potholes. Here's a better view of the pothole from within. From here, let's travel up current along Deep Lake to the Castle Lake Basin. Here's the Castle Lake Cataract and Basin created by the roiling floodwaters that race toward Deep Lake and spreading out for four miles all the way to Dry Falls. Looking in the opposite direction, toward the 175-foot tall wall along the Castle Lake Cataract. Behind the lip of Castle Lake Cataract are dozens more south-trending semi-parallel grooves that span the entire width of the Upland Plateau behind the Great Cataract Group all the way to Dry Falls, four miles away. Tom Foster of HugeFloods.com and I descended the cataract wall into the Castle Lake Basin via a set of well-anchored steel ladders. The ladders were installed in the late 1940s by government workers building a nearby canal and siphon for the Columbia Basin Irrigation Project. Along the western margin 
of the castle-like basin is Castle Rock. This eroded butte of basalt is neatly truncated on its east side after being sheared off by erosive floodwaters during cataract recession. Downstream, floodwater from Castle Lake Basin cascaded into Deep Lake far below. Tom Foster surveys the landscape above Deep Lake from the prominent rock bench of Grand Ronde Basalt along the lower end of the Castle Lake Basin. Here's the wild and remote upper end of breathtaking Deep Lake. Deep Lake Cooley continues eastward into Don Paul Draw above Deep Lake. Castle Lake Basin is to the right. At the lower end of the Castle Lake Basin, perched high above Deep Lake, is an elevated rock bench, riddled with another swarm of huge cavernous potholes drilled by mega floods. These potholes were also drilled into the top of the Grand Ronde Basalt, very similar to those shown earlier near the lower end of Deep Lake. Notice the pothole that was almost breached by the floodwaters. For those wanting to discover the Great Cataract Group for yourself, driving and hiking directions are included in my guidebook, On the Trail of the Ice Age Floods, the Northern Reaches. <laughs>